What is your most favourite experiment that you've ever done? Ah, well, my best experiment was, I've done a few. Um, I designed and built a machine to work out the fatigue properties of steel, which then got, that steel got put into the Westgate Bridge in Melbourne. And it doesn't meet its design requirements, so one day there'll be a bad disaster. That was a good experiment. Um, I designed a sort of machine to pick up electrical signals off the human eyeball uh, as part of my engineering studies to diagnose certain types of eye disease. And out of every 70 people, one person will be carrying the uh, genes for the disease recognised pigmentosa. But probably my most favourite of all was when I tried to work out what caused belly button fluff and white is almost always blue. And now I won the Nobel Prize, and at Harvard they showed so much respect for me that they flew me all the way to Harvard at my own expense. They would not insult me by offering me the money or the accommodation. Um, and so we worked out what caused belly button fluff and white is almost always blue. We started off with somebody asking me this question on Triple J, and I said, I don't know, but I'll go looking. And the best I could find was a study in the lab, and where a whole bunch of people came up with theories on this. And somebody came up with a theory that in the same way that all rows lead to row, then all hair on your abdomen leads to your belly button, and so all hair will, uh, that hair then next to the sort of a carrier, and funnels the belly button slot, whatever it is, into your belly button, and it falls in there and stays in there. It doesn't answer why it's blue or what it is. And then, a year later, somebody asked me a question, again on radio, and I said, I don't know, but this is the best answer I could find. And then about three weeks later, somebody rang up and said, well, you know, somebody asked me a question, you didn't know, I've actually done the experiment. I thought, wow, good on you. And this was Doug. Doug worked at the Soft Bottom Research Centre. Now, this is not an organisation where they went around the streets poking people in the buttocks to find out whether they had soft or hard bottoms, but rather a fishing area where they looked at fish that lived either on soft sandy bottoms or hard rocky bottoms, and they looked at fish that lived on soft sandy bottoms. And he had belly button fluff, and he had an idea. And so he followed up on his idea and he shaved a 10 centimetre circle free of hair, on his belly, centered on his belly button. And then suddenly the production of belly button fluff dropped down to zero. And then as the hair slowly grew back on his belly, the belly button fluff production increased. He had rats. He waited every day. I don't know why you guys aren't doing these sort of experiments. <coughs> so that stimulated me into doing a survey on the ABC and we uh, got 5,000 people to answer, and we found out that the average generator of belly button fluff is slightly overweight in middle aged male. However, it is possible for a female to have belly button fluff, and there was a case of a young lady who was hairless, who, on her abdomen, who nevertheless had belly button fluff, and she wore a very tight t shirt. And then she decided one day to um, put a ring in her navel. And then the ring in her navel acted like a tent pole on a tent that lifted the clothing above the belly button fluff, so the belly button fluff could make the last few centimetres into her belly button, and so suddenly the production of belly button fluff dropped down to zero. Also, there was another case of a young lady who was going out for the evening in the then popular interest exposing outfit, and her uh, brother said to her, hey sis, you've got some belly button fluff. She immediately rushed to the bathroom and then used not hers, but his electric toothbrush to clean her belly button, and um, had a very clean belly button. He, on the other hand, came down with the worst fungal infection of his life on his mouth. Even so, knowing the biohazard risks incumbent upon working with belly button fluff, we then decided to go ahead and actually analyse it. We got people to send us samples of belly button fluff around the world. We looked at it under a light microscope and then following, and this is some very important advice, so pay attention. Following the important principle that everything 
no matter how boring, always looks fantastic under an electron microscope, we then looked at it with an electron microscope. And we saw that belly button fluff was actually made up of fibres of clothing held together by um, dead skin. And the reason it's blue is because the average colour of your clothing is blue. The shirts are blue, I'm wearing blue, everybody wears blue. Black, there's no black shirt, there's no black dye. There's a mixture of a dark green dye and a dark blue dye, which when separated looks sort of bluish in individual fibres. And for this I won the Nobel Prize. That was my favourite experiment so far. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellie. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Carr. I think that's all the questions you managed to answer. Uh, everyone's been very impressed that you can uh, uh, answer so many questions. So, um, off, off the top of your head here. And I think we're just about to give you all a big clap. Everyone, give a big clap. Thank you, we'd, we'd love it if you could pop in in person next time you're down here. So um, feel, feel free to come in and see us if, you, if you're ever in the area.